All right, guys, welcome to the next video. And today we're going to talk about state management in React. Uh, also, we're going to talk about a very specific dependency called Zustand. And I will explain to you everything you need to know about it. And also, as you can see, I upgraded my environment a little bit, my camera and also my microphone. So let's leave in a comment how you like it and what I can improve. All right, guys, let me first of all start with what Zustand actually is and why it's so useful. So for this video, you should already have a base understanding of React state management. So this will, won't be a complete introduction to it, but for the very useful dependency called Zustand, we're gonna have a closer look at it. So I made some drawing here already, and you, as you see, you have one off module and for example, the home screen. And somehow you have to say after a successful login, that we should redirect our user to the home screen. And how do we do this? So there is some React built-in features or some hooks like the use context uh, hook, but this isn't always ideal and can lead to problems because you can need higher order components, for example, and it's not as useful as Sushan, for example. So what we do when we install Sushan, we make a wrapper where all the variables we set and functions in Zustand are completely available in the whole project file. So, for example, we say is logged in true or we set a GVT token, for example, then we can say if or, for example, detect if the JVT token is there, then we automatically detect, redirect the user to the home screen from the off module. So, Maybe it's a little bit confusing right now, but don't worry about it. We'll get into it right now. Okay, guys, the first thing we're going to do is install the package. So we say npm i zustand. And what I always like to do is to create a folder that I call state, for example. And then we create the index.ts file. And also we're going to create a file called create user slice because for a better organization or file structure, I always slice my, my states. For example, the one is the user, the other thing is the off. The next thing is maybe more app specific. For example, we need a, a newsletter or something like this, and we need to handle some specific state about the newsletter. So we don't have everything in one big file, for example. We just slice it and then we bring it together in the index.ts file. What we're gonna do now is go on the official npm documentation and just copy this. And you can find a very basic, simple example here and import it into our index.ts. So you should already know what this is. We imported the create function from uh, Zustand and we use it here and we say just for the simplicity of it, I always like to call it use Zustand and export it here. So this is already a very good base example, but for the simplicity of it, we are just gonna make it even simpler and just call it number, say increase number and say remove all numbers. And also we wanna make the types here and say interface and then number number state, for example, and just add this one here and declare the state here. All right, of course, we also have to change the variables here. And then it works perfectly fine. So you can see we already de declared some global variables and functions here. And if we import this correctly, and we'll get into this in the next step, we can use this in the whole application. So the next thing is that we just go to our app.tsx and import those variables and functions. So we say const number and increase number and remove all numbers and say use to stand and declare it here like this. All right. So if we switch to the window again, then we can see this base layout and we can see if it works perfectly fine. And we can increase the number and reset to zero again. 
So this isn't very uh, special functionality, but what makes it special that we handle the state outside of the component. So we see, for example, that we declared the, the or imported the number variable here and the increase number function and the remove all numbers function. And we could also, for example, make a new component and let's just call it login for the simplicity of it. And we take this one and I will just leave the two buttons inside here. And then we will import the new module called login. And as you can see, it works also perfectly fine. So those two, two uh, modules or components access the same state and the same functions. So this is the speciality about ZuStand. And I always like to use it, for example, for handling the user profile or handling a JVT token or a refresh token, for example, because I can easily access this in the whole application then. And yeah, the next thing we're gonna do is slice this because if we have like big chunks or big applications, we're gonna have a lot of variables and a lot of functions and we're gonna wanna slice it into uh, smaller ones that we can have a better overview and file structure. So I will just import a very simple example of a access token and how we can use it. So the first thing is that we declare two interfaces. One is the user state and the second thing is the user actions. So the user state is the, the default state because there I like to separate it very much and there we can put all our variables in. For example, the access token, maybe a user object, for example, etc., etc. And then of course we have to type it and create the user slice here. So this is those two types combined or concatenated, and then we have to we have to type it and declare it in here into the state creator, which we also import from ZuStand. And then we add the default state that those variables are also in the in the user slice, and then we can declare our ver or our functions and how we like to use them. And this is just very simple: the set access token and the get access token. And what we can do now is that we import the user slice into our index.ts file and also the user slice here. And then we have to create a new type. I'd like to call it store and then I put the store here and eventually we just have to add the user slice here. And of course, just add the variables here and also because we typed it, it expects a store variable and the get one, get and store. But this is something for another video. The store, at least the get, we already did. And then it should perfect, work perfectly fine as well. So we just say here, we just use the access token then. And also we say in the login module, we use the set access token and we make a new button and we just trigger this, yes, and say something very simple. And then, first of all, we want to display the access token and also we make a conditional render, for example, and we just print something out very simple or we just reset the access token again. All right, and of course we have to import it. Perfect. And what we do now, or maybe we should call it a better way, is say set access token and when we set it, perfect. It sets the access token and also we can reset it again. And this is a very, very good example of that we use the login module. And based on this, we can route different things. For example, if the access token is set, then we want to 
We want to load completely different modules, for example, the login screen, and then after you have been logged in, like the access token has been set, then we just redirect to the home screen, for example. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching my second video. I'd be happy if you would give me some feedback. I'd really like to improve my videos. And also, if you have any questions, just leave it down below and like and subscribe and stay tuned for more new videos.